Okay, so um, I, I'm just going to, I'm very full and I'm not sure I completely understand, so I'm just going to throw it up. Go so, for it. Okay, so. You won't be the first that's done that. Okay, so I am understanding you say that we were created from God through just a wonder and an expression that God wished to express more. And I understand that we all are definitely individual expressions of God. Mm -hmm. And we get into the ego because we can. Which is a thought system. We begin to think unlike, opposite to God. Opposite to God simply because we can. Yes. So I guess my question is, where do those thoughts come from? And my ego wants me to think because I am thinking, because I can, against what God is, then that thinking is flawed Therefore, I am. And that association gets made all the time. Again, depending on where you are on the bridge, we are going to be bouncing between feeling, you know, really special. And then we find out this stuff that makes us the same as everybody else. And then we realize we have all this thinking that is making me feel special and that's bad. So then I'm flawed and I'm not so special. We're going to be bouncing back and forth between the ego thoughts and the truth until we forgive ourselves enough for that's where that bipolar comes in. We're going to be swinging for a very long time. So the opportunity for you is to practice forgiveness for thinking that you are flawed because that thought that I am flawed is a block to the thought that you are whole. And we can think any thought that we want. There, God does not put, it's, it's unconditionally loving. Every thought can be thought. And we have been using a mind, the very powerful mind of God, because there's only one mind, to think thoughts that just block us from experiencing the truth of who we are. And to think that you're flawed if you entertain that thought, you are blocking love, but it doesn't make you flawed for thinking you're flawed. It just makes you mistaken. Okay. That's all it is. It's just a mistake. And then when you forgive yourself for making that mistake in thinking, the part of you that can forgive you is the part of you that knows your wholeness, that knows no matter how much you think you're flawed, you can never be flawed. You're just thinking you're flawed, and that gives you the feeling that goes along with it. How do you feel when you think you're flawed? Do you feel tight and tense or totally happy? Yeah, I feel tight and tense. Okay, yeah. so you're constricting the mm -hmm. flow of love. Mm -hmm. So in this moment, just say, I prefer to accept that I'm having the thought that I'm flawed. Just go into acceptance. Mm -hmm. Do you feel a little relief? Just accept the thought. Yeah. Okay. But, but where do my where where are my thoughts coming from? What what is that? Thoughts is is just like for example, if you think of the ocean, and waves are are coming from the ocean, it's just a movement of energy. Okay. So thoughts are are waves. Are waves really waves? No, they're part of the ocean. They're part of the water. So the thoughts that we are having that are unlike loving thoughts uh -huh. it's just a movement okay. of energy and that movement is happening because we are not being very deliberate with how we use energy okay because we haven't been taught how to harness energy how to right. use it how to move it in the direction that it's meant to move mm -hmm. yeah so uh, thank you so much for that question yeah. so a, a very simple analogy so we all know that water moves in one direction. You know, there, there's, a, there, there's a movement that water is just gonna flow in one direction. Humans can block it. We can go ahead and create dams and stop the block, the, the flow of water. We can absolutely do that. But that water is going to want to continue to do what it does and over time, it is going to push that dam out of the way. It is going to create holes in that dam. What is happening is we have been damming the flow of love with our thinking. And our thinking cannot stop the, the flow of the water, but it creates a whole lot of suffering while we are blocking it. And life is saying, no, you guys are returning. 
So we, we are going back to remembering that we are love and in the process of returning to love, we are going to have all those thoughts come up and we have to be very gentle with ourselves because every single bit of that dam has to be taken down. The cracks are going to be put on there because love wants to have its way with us. We then have to take it break by break, take that wall down. And the break by break is the thoughts and beliefs that we have had. What holds that wall together is righteousness. If you're willing to not be right, you're going to be able to unpack the breaks from that wall little by little. And the, the beautiful thing about this is that if you ask, if you get really still, go back into that place of stillness and ask Holy Spirit, God, your guide, whatever you want to help you, you're going to be able to move things a lot smoother and a lot quicker. And a teaching like the Course in Miracles is going to give you exactly how to do that. But you've got to stay open-minded because it is unlike what we have been trained to believe as humans. The idea that we're flawed is, is one of those crazy thoughts that, God, that we could have. And when we accept that we are flawed, we have to undo the pain and the discomfort of that because the reason we feel tight and tense when we're thinking something that is not true is because we're blocking love. We are damming up love. And what undams us is to let love flow. What lets love flow is to not be right about the thought that damns love. Does that, does that make sense? Makes sense to me. <laughs> makes sense. Very cool. So let's, let's look at this uh, forgiveness exercise. This is lesson 121. And lesson 121 says that forgiveness is the key to happiness. So this exercise, which is pretty lengthy, the lesson, I'm not going to read the whole thing, so I'm just going to take you to the exercise. But I'm just going to read the first thing. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Here is the answer to your search for peace. Here is the key um, to meaning in a world that seems to make no sense. Here is the way to safety. When we are committed to letting ourselves begin the process of forgiveness and keep forgiveness simple. I forgive myself for forgetting the truth. I forgive them for they know not the truth. When Jesus said, I, you know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing, it's, it's the same thing as forgive them for they know not the truth. So when you use forgiveness, please keep it that simple. And then begin to get familiar with what is the truth. The truth is very simple. Take a picture of this, keep it with you, and if you are in not in oneness, you know you're in what's not truth. If you're not remembering your eternalness, you know you are in what's not true. Because you want to keep the work simple. The ego loves to complicate this. But once you realize that the simpler you keep it, the better it is, the faster your process is going gonna, is gonna to move. Um, yeah. Sure. So could you say that if you're living in happiness, you're living in the truth? Yes. In that moment, you are. And if you lose your happiness, you just had a thought that blocked the truth. So if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was precious. Thank you. Um, You're so, precious. <laughs> I am as God created me. So, so let's, I want to take you through this exercise. So the unforgiving mind, and I'm in paragraph nine, the unforgiving mind does not believe that giving and receiving are the same. Yet we will try to learn today that they are one through practicing forgiveness towards one whom you think of as an enemy and one whom you consider as a friend. And as you learn to see them both as one, we will extend the lesson to yourself and see that their escape includes yours. So as we think of an enemy and we think of a friend, we're gonna see that they're all the same. And once we see that they're all the same, we are going to extend that, that same 
forgiveness to ourselves. What does escape mean in that? Uh, the last sentence of that paragraph? Okay, so, and as you learn to see them both as one, we will extend the same lesson to yourself and see that their escape includes yours. So their escape from our judgment. So because we're the light of the world, our, and one of the lessons that we didn't talk about is that we are the ones who are here to extend salvation to others. And by extending salvation is we're saying, I'm gonna take you off the hook for being responsible for how I feel. Uh, you're, you're not responsible for the wholeness that God created me as. So they are going to, everybody's gonna escape from the judgments, escape from the ego mind. So the escape is from hell, bottom line. And as they escape, we escape too, because if we see everybody as whole, it's back to the projection into the mirror. If I see your wholeness, it's because it's coming from mine. And we are going to, for, for until we totally completely um, return to being pure energy, we don't have to reincarnate like Jesus. He hasn't had to reincarnate. Until we're at that level, the Course tells us we're going to create a happy dream. So instead of suffering in hell, we are going to have physical bodies and have an experience of otherness, but we're going to do it from a happy place. That's what we are escaping from the hell that condemns people to misery so that we can all create a happy dream and live happily ever after on planet Earth while we appear to be separate, which is a wonderful, isn't that exciting? Yeah.